All right, so this is chapter 26. This deals with classification. So um, we'll kind of break this up into you know a couple of different parts here. But what I want to start with here is just a TOK question. And it says, the adoption of a system of binomial nomenclature is largely due to Swedish botanists and, phys and Swedish botanists and a physician named Carl von Linné. Carolus Linnaeus is kind of what he became known as. So uh, Linnaeus also defined four groups of humans, and the divisions were based on both physical and social traits. By the 21st century standards, his descriptions can be regarded as racist. How does the social context of scientific work affect the methods and findings of research? Is it necessary to consider the social context when evaluating ethical aspects of knowledge claims? So go ahead and take a, a second, think about that question, read it again if you need to, and then write down an answer and we'll make sure that we talk about these things in class, okay? All right, so um, chapter 26, this particular uh, portion deals with classification. We'll talk about phylogeny and cladistics in, in another section, but this one um, kind of talks about uh, classification. And nothing is worse than active ignorance, okay? So that's a good quote there to just kind of keep in mind as we're talking about these types of things here. All right, so the essential idea here is that species are named and classified using an internationally uh, agreed upon system to kind of make sure that everybody's referring to the same things and when we're talking about this. So taxonomy is a way in which organisms are named and classified scientifically once they get discovered. And then what we're going to do is try to avoid this ambiguity by using this taxonomical kind of way in which we're going to scientifically name these organisms to ensure that everybody's talking about the same thing. So we talked about uh, Carl von Linné, okay, and he's the guy that invented this system of binomial nomenclature. In other words, this two-part naming system. He did so in the 18th century, and he was so devoted to it, he kind of changed his name to Carolus Linnaeus, all right? And so um, what you're basically doing is Latinizing this. So I'll show you this. This will be a video underneath this particular section here. And so uh, what we refer to binomial nomenclature now really as just is binomial. So this binomial system is what we're going to use kind of universally among biologists. And we're going to kind of agree upon the way in which we're going to go through this uh, in a series of congresses where these people are going to get together and kind of agree upon the, the, the naming system. And the naming system for these organisms is given a two-part name, the first one referring to the genus, and the second one belongs to the species. So uh, what we basically do is Latinize it. For instance, if we talk about uh, humans, we're talking about Homo sapiens. And for instance, you, you know, see that you're going to either write this in italics or you're just going to simply write uh, capital H okay, for Homo. So this needs to be capitalized. And then sapiens is the first one is lowercase. And since we can't uh, italicize it, what we're gonna do is underline it, but you'll often see it italicized in text, okay? But the key is, is the genus is first, species is second, the genus, homo here, capital H, and then the species, sapiens, lowercase s. So that's the way that you write it. If you write it any other way, it's considered to be wrong, okay? So this hierarchical classification now is basically going to kind of look at the um, increasing inclusiveness of these categories as we go through this hierarchy, okay? And you can look at really prokaryotes and eukaryotes as an empire, kind of even, even down here and then uh, in, in this area. And then as we go up now, we've got the three uh, domains and then we've got the kingdoms and then we, we continue on. So what you wanna remember here is kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. And then above the kingdom here, okay, you can have a domain and you've got the bacteria, the Archaeans and the eukaryotes, and then you could potentially have an empire. All right, so these two are, are fairly new, but this kingdom phylum class order family genus species has been around for a long time. So what you wanna look at is in the way that um, I was taught this was King Philip came over from Germany swimming. 
and that was that's kind of a mnemonic that you can use. There's a number of different ones. It doesn't matter to me uh, when you've done it as long as I have. You just remember kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. Um, and then the new ones here are empire, prokaryotes, and eukaryotes, and then the domain, uh, archaeans, uh, eubacteria, and then the eukarya in those domains, and then you go through the kingdoms, okay? Um, so you can see that in this natural classification system, what you've got is this genus that's going to accompany a higher taxa that consists of all of the species that have evolved from that common ancestor. So you're going to you know, become increasingly um, specific as you go down, of course, to species. And then as you go up towards kingdom, you become more inclusive. So you have these animals that all have these different things in common. And as we go through the next part here, when we start talking about the actual phylogeny and the building of cladistics, a lot of this stuff will make more sense. So this is really kind of an introductory type of a thing with some vocabulary, vocabulary here, okay? So putting these things together helps us identify the different types of species. And what we can do is predict characteristics based on these inclusions within the particular group. And then what we do is we either confirm it or refute it with different types of phylogenetic data, morphological data, genetic data, protein data, all of those things that we're going to learn about in the next section here. We're going to do a lab to kind of show this. But this is just kind of the general, um, I guess, overview of what's going on here. All right. So, of course, if you have any questions, make sure you write them down. Make sure you answer that TOK question and we'll discuss them all in class. All right. We'll talk to you soon.